Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game City of the Great Machine by Crowd Games. It plays two to four players, takes 45 to 90 minutes to play, and is for ages 14 and up. And in the game City of the Great Machine, you will be playing a one versus many board game. One player will be playing as the machine. The other players are going to be playing as the smart uh, and savvy heroes attempting to stop the city from mechanizing the entire city and all of its inhabitants. The machine itself had first managed to mechanize his technicians and creators, giving them implants and turning them to be mechanical, and then slowly but surely started to mechanize the city as well as the guards, and then forced the inhabitants to live by his or her specific rule. And slowly but surely, everything began to become like a cog in a machine. And the few resistance members that are left will be played as the other players. Their objective is to stop the machine from gaining complete control over the city, which is now called the City of the Great Machine. You will have a certain amount of turns in order to successfully cause enough riots before the machine is able to control and can maintain complete domination over the city. Will the resistance win or or will the city of the great machine get what it's always wanted control and purpose for everyone in the city Setting up the game City of the Great Machine is complex but also simple, and if you would like, a detailed explanation will be down below in the description where you can watch somebody else's video who does an excellent job of explaining it, but it is lengthier, and if you just want a smaller, shorter breakdown, follow my video, or if you don't, watch theirs and then come back to see just my review, which I'll have pinned down as well. And we'll start by explaining the first portion of setup. To start, you're going to create the city. In order to create the city, you're going to take the major and minor districts and connect them all. The only main rule for that is they have to connect via these little uh, location spots. And if at any point in time you could remove a portion of a city and it creates two separate cities, that would be an illegal placement. So you have to make sure that whenever you take off or move a piece, it's never going to form two separate states of a location. So everything has to connect because you're gonna need to move your characters around. And then after your placement is done, you move on to the next phase. The next phase being famous citizens. Basically take all the famous citizens, shuffle them up, which look like these little pieces here, and place them down in each of the locations where there is a blue square. There's going to be green squares or like yellow squares. Uh, those are gonna be for later use. Maybe more citizens will come out or be moved around. Also make sure that when you place them, you make sure that when you place them, the little square indention on these guys never will show the green square. You'll see what I mean when you see the board itself. After that, you move on to guards. Place two guards in the top left-hand locations of each of the different major and minor districts. You should, at the end, have only three famous citizens left and one guard. Uh, once you've done that, you've completed creating the entire city. The next step is based on the number of players you have. If you have one revolutionary, they're going to take all three of the heroes. If you have two, they'll take one and one, and one player will switch back, and or the players will switch back and forth with a third. And if you're playing with three revolutionaries, each one will get their own unique revolutionary. So in a two-player game, like I said before, one player will get three of them, and then the other player is going to be playing as the city of the great machine. Give each player the player board, as well as the asset card deck for them. And then place the characters or based on the uh, specific icon on the card onto the location that is directed. So for instance, this character here is, uh, her name is Sylvia. You're going to go ahead and place this guy on the science district because it has a science symbol on the character board. And you'll do the rest for all of them. Then you also take the servants of the great machine and place them all on the grand citadel. The next step is the progress board, which is a big fat board that you're gonna be using throughout the game. You'll have the discontent track, and then you're going to have the master plan track. For discontent, based on the number of revolutionaries playing in the game, whether it be one, two, or three, you'll move this little marker based on the little heads here um, on the six space. Uh, so in a one player uh, revolutionary game, you place it on the first one, two, it's on the second, and three on the third. Then based on um, how difficult you want the machine to be, you can take this master plan marker here and move it to one, two, or three. Three is for the base game, but you can move it to two or one if you want to make it a little more challenging for the machine. This is what's going to help you determine who wins the game. If this disc content marker gets to the end here, it will start a riot. And that is one of the three needed for the revolutionaries. If this track, the master plan, gets all the way around to the 12 here, that will end the game and the machine will win, basically controlling the entire city. Once you've chosen the difficulty of the game, then you go ahead and set that safe face up so that all players can see it and are within reach of it, and you move on to the next portion the city event deck. 
This is rather simple. You'll take the final countdown card and place it on the bottom of the deck. Then you're going to take six random uh, type one or tier one cards and six random tier two cards. And you'll push the, put the two on top of the countdown and you'll put the ones on top of the two, thusly creating the deck. This is going to signify the rounds of play and will basically trigger things either during the game or at the end, during the round or at the end of each round, basically either moving the discontent marker up or down or moving the master plan up, uh, which will basically help the machine out if the players aren't able to stop the specific effects from taking place. After you do that, then you're going to move on to giving the machine character all the things needed. Machine is going to need to have a certain number of bonds. Uh, bonds are going to be equal to the number presented on the discontent track. It starts at six, but as this thing moves to each of the different regions, the great machine is going to gather more and more up until it reaches the very far, the very end, which will be 12. They'll start with six. They're also going to get three servant markers that'll start on their face up side, and then three of the a raids. Raids are used to prevent the uh, characters, the revolutionaries, from getting to certain locations and stopping their turn. However, if a player, uh, the Great Machine, places a raid down and it doesn't actually trigger, it can be not so beneficial. Don't forget to also give the Great Machine player the directive deck. This is basically cards they can gather and then install into the city to make it more challenging for the heroes. But have no fret, the heroes are also able to remove them if need be. And that's basically the entire setup for the game. Make sure that you set aside uh, two of the riot tokens because all you'll need is two because once the third one triggers, the game is over. And any trust and bond left over can be set aside as well. Then start playing. Playing the game is simple. I'll explain one round and how it is played and then we'll move on to my review. And like I said, you can always go back and uh, hit that little link in the description for a full detailed example of how it's done. But most of my review will probably cover a lot of the details provided, uh, explaining what I like and dislike about certain things. So you can hold on and see if you'd like. But what will happen at the very beginning of the game is you're going to draw a city event. Every round, the beginning of a round, you'll draw the city event, you'll reveal it and put it within uh, reach or eye vision of all players. Then you're going to check. The first portion is going to be either during the round or it's going to be at the end of the round. Then at the bottom, it'll have basically the master plan advances if. The first portion is something that needs to be accomplished by the revolutionaries, usually to prevent something bad from happening. And the last thing is something that is going to basically affect uh, the board here, uh, basically the master plan moving up if the heroes do not do it. This is going to be left out. Uh, sometimes it'll like help the guards out for the great machine. And also if players don't play a special action on their turn, it will sabotage them and force the master plan to progress throughout the, the uh, turn of the game. Once this is out, you move on to the next phase. One quick addendum. At the very beginning of the round as well, players and the Great Machine are going to receive trust and bonds. Uh, the players are going to receive trust based on the um, spaces they're at and how many citizens are there. And if two players share the same location, they'll have to split that amount and they can choose to divide it up how they would like. And in this case, you're going to be taking four for each player and placing them down at the very beginning of the game. But that can change based on the number of citizens in each of the spaces. Trust and bonds are going to be utilized in order for you to do actions. And also to note too, the trust and bond tokens are also going to be front and back sided, one for the great machine and one for the revolutionaries. But it's a very important aspect not to forget the revenue of the round. So get the resources first. The machine will also do so, but not in the first round because they've already received their six bonds. But they will get, uh, the machine will get resources based on this track and where it is and what number it states. And it has a little bond mark and it says the number and that's how much that the machine is going to receive for currency for themselves. And then of course, flip the thing over, the deck of events, do whatever it says and try and accomplish it throughout the round. And then we're going to move on to the access phase. During the access phase, each of the heroes, or if you're playing with all the heroes, you'll select each of their decks individually, and you'll choose one of the cards to place. When you choose a card, you'll place it face down and set the others aside. This is the location you're going to go to, and based on what location you want to go to, each space you move, you're going to spend resources, your trust, uh, based on the number of guards in each of the locations you're going through. So if you were to go through one location and the next, you're going to spend uh, two and two at the very beginning of the game if you move through uh, two of them. If you only go through one, you'll just spend two. 
And um, it'll also have a unique special um, uh, actions that you can take in that location. It's just kind of a note of what you can do, but you only take one action, which we'll get to later. But basically each player is going to select one of these cards and that is the location they wish to go to. Make sure it's face down though, because the great machine cannot know. You do not want to let the machine know where you're going. So this is kind of like a, a setup of like m uh, mechanical movement or you know whatever you want to call it, like Robo Rally, where you place the cards down secretly. And then the great machine is going to go ahead and take their turn. When the Great Machine goes, how it works is fairly simple. The Great Machine can move their guards and their servants. If they move their guards, they simply just move. And it's going to cost them one of their currency, one bond per location they move their guards to. If you move them two spaces, then they're going to spend two currency. And of course, they must have enough spaces in the space they wish to go to in order for them to be there. Um, and the other as aspect of uh, movement is going to be the servants. Basically, you will do the same thing with them, but instead of one per space, servants will cost two. Uh, additionally to note, remember that each player or each character is going to have their own unique trust and the great machine is going to have bonds that they can use, that he can utilize or she can utilize for all the servants. So they kind of have a shared pool that is used between these guys. Once you move your servant, you can then take an action. You can also choose to take an action, but you can't move after taking an action, and you can only choose one. And these servants have three basic abilities, and then they can also take a special ability instead if they're on a specific location. The three basic actions are Arrest, Repair, and Raid. Arresting is going to allow you to remove from the field any face up specific famous persons, basically removing them from the board, protecting you from having to suffer any uh, riots that may occur. To repair, you can basically uh, flip up any of the guards that have been knocked down. Uh, during the hero's turns, they can defeat your guards and you can use your hero to, or servants to basically re re put these guys back up, thusly hindering the heroes more. And the final one is they can choose to raid. And raid's dangerous, but also useful. What happens is they will move to a location, they will spend their raid marker. And if any hero on the next part portion of the round walks into that location, then the raid will affect them, basically making them either lose their turn or suffer uh, some type of um, increase on the board here. Uh, and if a player doesn't go to that location, then instead you're going to be pushing up the discontent track, helping the heroes. So it's kind of a risk reward, trying to guess where players are going to go uh, based on what they need. So only use them sparingly when you need to. Uh, there are also special actions too, which you can look on your great machine card here. And based on the locations, it will tell you uh, what you can do. Basically the uh, Grand Citadel will allow you to draw a directive card. Uh, the Tower of Law will let you put a directive card into play. Uh, the Control Nexus is going to let you reposition di a district, basically following the same rules where you can actually move a district from one area to another, creating the city, because you are basically in control of the entire city. And of course the Central Square is going to give you currency based on the amount of guards, um, uh, citizens minus guards. So if you got four citizens and two guards, you'll get two currency. So less guards there, more points, but having no guards there is going to benefit the heroes. And uh, that's pretty much the idea of what you're going to be doing with your uh, servants. Servants will take their action or they will move and take their action. Special actions can only happen on the specific areas I outlined. Basic actions can happen provided there is uh, something to do on that space. Sometimes you might not even have an action to utilize, but you wanna be in a certain area for next round and that's okay too. After you have chosen to spend as much currency as you would like, moving your guards and moving your servants and taking actions, because some of these are going to cost you a certain number of points, then you will pass to the next phase of the game. The heroes are going to start taking their actions. Basically what happens first is you're going to reveal the card that you put face down during the access card phase, reveal that card, move to the space, and pay the currency required. Note that also when you play that card, it will tell you, like I said before, the different actions you can take, the special actions in that location, but there's also basic actions as well. So heroes basically function like the servants do for the great machine. You'll be moving based on your hidden thing, checking to see if you get raided, and then if not, you can go ahead and do uh, what the card says, taking one action. You you can identify a famous citizen by taking a look at one of them on the location you're at and putting it back face down so that the little square cut is going to show the green space. Um, 
which basically lets you and anybody else see them throughout the game because you need to in order to start uh, riots in order to win the game. Uh, you can also attack a guard. You'll basically be rolling the die based on a certain criteria. If you're able to succeed, then you will defeat a guard and knock it down. You can also try and start a riot. Um, basically what happens is you're going to flip over all the citizens, whether you've seen them or not, and then based on what teams each of them are on, uh, will start successfully start a riot or fail. Uh, Basically what happens is if your discontent marker is a certain um, way along this track here, it'll open up certain numbers. And each of the different famous citizens have a number on them. You can look at the bottom, the very beginning of the game to see, but they go from one to five. And when you start, you'll have access to none of them. And you're trying to basically create discontent, discontent so that the more famous and more popular citizens will get on board with you. Sometimes you can start a riot not knowing what any of the citizens are, but if you're far enough on discontent, you can perform the riot and succeed. Uh, other times if you're not far enough and you don't actually know what citizens are there, it can cost you. There's certain same as citizens that are gonna be traitors, and if they're traitors, it doesn't matter how far and discontent it is, that will, character will count towards the machine. So for instance, if you're on the discontent track and you've got uh, three twos and ones available to you, because as far as you are, you're also anything that you passed as well, and uh, you reveal a four, a five, a three, and a three, the threes will be on your side, the four and five will be on nobody's side, and if there's a traitor, it will go to the, the great machine side. You'll tally up the guards and any traitors, and if you'll tally up the citizens that are on your side, and if you have more, you'll successfully cause a riot. Three riots wins you the game as the revolutionaries. If not, you'll suffer some type of penalty. And uh, that's a very important thing in the game. R rating is, rioting is very, very important, but you have to be very careful when you do so, because if you fail, it will advance the, the master plan up. Um, then there's other actions you can do. You can do incitement, you can do special um, hero actions in the major districts, and it tells you on not only the card here what it does, but also will tell you on your little player sheet as well. When looking at it, you can say, okay, you can perform either A or B, or sometimes just A. Uh, a lot of times it can remove directive cards that have been published, and also it can basically increase the incitement track up, which creates uh, more uh, opportunity for you to successfully sway people to your side when you start a riot. After you have moved and performed one of the many actions, then that will be the end of the hero phase. The last phase is the closing phase. And how that works is you'll start by checking to see how many failed raids there were. So basically whatever the machine puts out those raid tokens, if no one, none of the heroes went to those locations, the raids failed, wasted time, and thusly will increase the discontent for the heroes, allowing them to hopefully gather uh, unique and new citizens for riots later. And if, of course, there were no failed raids, you would just move on to the next step, which is two, uh, city events. You'll, che you'll check for the end of the uh, day or end of the round phase. Uh, you'll say, okay, there, there are no broken guards at round's end except for districts with servants and or riot tokens. And um, if that is the case, the master plan will advance. And if it is not the case, the master plan will not advance, which is this thing here, moving around the track, hoping to get to that coveted number 12. Then after that, you will check the last phase of the game, which is going to be the city event, uh, or sorry, uh, you'll, yeah, the, you'll start the end of round if there is one, and then the city event, which will move that thing along. After you've done that, then you will start by go, uh, beginning the round again. All the players will collect their trust and bonds, heroes for the different famous citizens located in their area, the great machine based on this dis discontent board. You move on to flipping over another city event, seeing if something happens during the round or at the end of the round, and also, of course, what happens with the um, master plan if you are not able to successfully uh, prevent it from advancing. And then, of course, the heroes are going to select their locations, the great machine is going to move servants and move the guards. Heroes will then flip over, move and pay, perform actions, pay for those actions because everything costs uh, currency in the game. And then after that, it will move on to the ending phase where it does all the cleanup and whatnot. Um, and of course, that's it. The end of the game triggers when either the master plan gets all the way around the board or if three raids happen. Uh, riots happen uh, and, and the main way riots happen is like I said flipping over these guys here But additionally too, if this board goes all the way around like I said previously and it gets to the space here It's never going to be able to move again And also you're going to give the heroes the revolutionaries one free riot Which is one closer to their goal Will you as the revolutionaries be able to successfully stop the city of the great machine? Or will the city of the great machine keep churning its gears and eventually become make metal out of man? 
While playing this game, I noticed that it has a lot of complexity, but the phases of the game are not that complex. And it's rather simple. I can do the little TLDR if you didn't watch my explanation of the game. What happens is city event, things will happen during the game and at the end of the round, and you're going to try and as the revolutionaries complete those goals so that the bad guy doesn't get successful things. Then after that, the hero, the, the heroes are going to uh, pick a space after gathering resources, uh, pick a space they want to go to, like hidden movement. And then of course the machine will go trying to predict where they're going to be as well as protecting those spaces that they're on. And then it'll go to the heroes. The heroes will reveal, move their characters based on where they wanted to go, performing actions and hopefully causing riots as well as gaining uh, enough currency in the game to messed up the great machine in its master plan. And the end of the game will trigger with the end of the phase will trigger uh, with whatever this says at the bottom here uh, and any other cleanup that happens, whether it be raids that were not successful or whatnot. And then of course you flip over and begin the round again and you just keep going like that. And there's just one of two ways the game will end. Um, this game has a lot going for it and is extremely complex. But once you start getting into the rounds, maybe after the second round of the game, you've got it. It makes complete sense. Yes, there's a lot of special action and yes, there is a ton of different basic actions you can take. Um, if you're playing as a two-player game, the Great Machine is always going to be playing as the Great Machine. It's never going to change. But with another player playing as just all the revolutionaries, it can be quite... Uh, complex because you're working with three characters and trying to figure out where they're going to go and so you have to think a lot harder when playing just two players now it does work just fine two players and it is still just as fun but i prefer playing this game with at least three and four is probably its sweet spot because you're going to be working together trying to hide as much information from the machine uh without of course whispering so you can still talk to each other and stuff like that and try and like oh maybe i want to go to this place and, uh, and kind of coordinate as to how you want to plan with a, the great machine looming over and watching your every move and trying to predict where you're going to go and what you're going to do, which is super freaking fun. I, I really, really enjoy that aspect of the game. I love the hidden movement aspect where the players are basically selecting their location, machine then acts, and then the players will act after the machine uh, acts. So the machine can respond to the, where the players are going to go. And then the players are going to respond with uh, where they uh, where they had to go because they chose and then what type of actions they want to take. Some actions are pretty powerful in the game, but they have a huge like risk to them. The raiding is uh, exceptionally useful. And if you're going to, if you can, if you know where players are going to go, it's a no brainer. You want to do that. But if you don't know, it will cost you. Moving that discontent tracker is going to help the good guys along well. And the master plan or uh, master track, moving that ahead is going to help the bad guy. And that threat from both sides of the field is present present and glooming all the while and while you're moving around. The city also changes, which works thematically with the game. This has got steampunk in its veins. It feels like you're playing a steampunk game. It feels like you're creating this ever-growing city as the great machine and trying to control and rule the populace and force them into what you believe is the best and most perfect way humanity should act. Whereas the revolutionaries are the great thinkers and they want to decide what they want to do. They don't want to become a machine. They want to have uh, control over their own decisions and destiny. And the machine doesn't know any better. And so you can kind of feel for, for both sides uh, when you're watching uh, this all play out. Out, and it plays out exactly as the theme needs to. The artwork is excellent. If you like steampunk games and you like steampunk artwork, if you like this textile savvy gritty style art, ooh, it does exactly what you want it to do. The progress board is amazing. Moving discontent, moving the master plan feels good in your hand. It feels like you're progressing the game as you move along and each player, whenever they move one of these tokens, it feels good. It's, it's, a uh, it's like hand eye pleasing or whatever you want to call it you know how when you're eating something it feels good it's the same kind of concept with this one here just as well as moving the board around moving the guards around and selecting locations it's got a bit of deception in it a bit of strategy and planning and a heck load of tension if you like games drenched in tension and games that are always like there's always a threat looming around the other corner and always traps to be found this is one i would strongly suggest taking a look at city events are fun and ever-changing and they're going to require you to do things you may not want to do 
in order for the machine not to progress. And sometimes it's okay to let it progress if you have a better action that will make it worthwhile for you or the revolutionaries. And sometimes it's better to make sure this gets done. But you also have to be aware of how you coordinate and talk with your teammates. Uh, they play so differently and yet so similarly. The machine functions just like the revolutionaries do in far, as far as movement and taking actions with the servants. And these guys do the same, but how they do it makes a huge difference. Planning ahead, looking at the citizens, having knowledge that the machine doesn't, and the machine trying to predict that type of knowledge is a lot of fun. All the components are excellent, high quality. The miniatures are really cool as well. They made a great decision of choosing miniatures for this game, and the guards for the little spaces work perfectly as well. I just like to move those miniatures around the board, and it feels good, tactile, to place things down and to move them around as well. Choosing the front and back for the trust and bond tokens was excellent as well. It gives enough enough tokens for each and every player, and you can kind of just split the map how you choose. The fact that each of the heroes has their own unique abilities that are actually really good and useful, and you need to remember to do so because it will benefit you greatly. A couple things about this game. One thing I will say is the rule book kind of stinks. It's really, really, really wordy. There's a lot to it. And if you see uh, some of the uh, walkthrough videos, they can be extremely lengthy because they go into every little... Um, every little nook and cranny about it. I would have actually preferred to have like a quick start and kind of explain the very basics and then give a, a more detailed approach to it. Now, yes, there's a reference guide here, which will help you out. And this, it'll go through like um, the different characters and the different tactics you can use and how city works and the different choices you can make for setting up a city. So you can start with one of these pre setups or you can kind of just make your own, which is nice. But I would prefer to have a little quick setup guide for this because there's so much to the, to the, the rules. In fact, they could probably just remove certain pieces of it uh, to help you get through it because there's, there's a lot of information to take but once you play the game and you start getting through it you're like okay this is rather simple I understand what I'm doing and it all comes down to strategy and tactics now um, and of course another thing is when you get uh, held up by a raid so whenever the great machine raids a certain location and you walk into that raid it's devastating for you it's very very painful now yes the machine does suffer but it does not feel good when you get on that location and you lose your turn or and you lose all your currency or something bad happens like for instance the great master plan moves up on the board and it also doesn't feel great as a machine to lose that directive that they installed. They moved one of their servants to gather the card, another of their servants to install the card, and then one of the heroes walked over there, spent, and you lost the card. And that doesn't feel so good. But it does make sense. It's not like it's unbalanced or anything like that. It's just more of a personal thing with me. I wanted to keep those directives on the field, and I never got to keep them. They would not let me have them because they're so powerful and they're so fun to have. So it does make sense, but it was just one of those things that kind of is stuck in my you know throat a little wonky. But regardless though, other than those small gripes I have, quality of components, artwork, the gameplay, the decision making, the social skills that you need to require, the, uh, the treacherous traitors that exist in the city, and how the theme really, really comes together in this game is excellent. Hands down one of my favorite Steampunks game, games I've played in a long time. And if you're interested in this game, it's currently available on Kickstarter. I would suggest you take a look at this game if you love one verse mini games, if you love Steampunk and you love strategy. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game City of the Great Machine by Crowd Games. Like I said before, if you're interested, there's a link down below in the description where you can pick up the game currently on Kickstarter. You can also go ahead and head over to our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Don't forget to also check out our live streams every Sunday, 6.30 p.m. PST, where we play games just like this one. You can see these games played live, so you can determine what you think is very fun, not just my own words, but also how we all interact together playing the games, and probably it'll help you determine if this type of game for you or not. Hopefully I gave you a, a good understanding of kind of what the game is like, and I also want to include the link in the description too for the full explanation of the game. It helped me out after reading the rules, and I think it'll help you as well if my summary didn't work out enough, which it was quite a long summary in my opinion. Maybe it'll be like half an hour as opposed to the hour, but regardless, uh, go ahead and also check out our Patreon if you'd like. A dollar a month goes a long way. It helps us pay for our Discord boosted server. It helps us pay for um, our shipping for giveaways when we do them. There's one on the website right now. And it also helps us pay for the, um, oh, what is it called? The, the, the live streams, because we're doing um, multi-stream and whatnot, and I'm paying for that on, uh, on Twitch. So anyway, all up to you. No big deal either way. We just greatly appreciate it regardless. And that's pretty much it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, the great machine will loom over you next time.